Hey everyone, thanks so much for joining us for this live stream episode of Dogman Encounters Radio. I apologize for missing you last week. Unfortunately, I had an equipment failure and due to that, I wasn't able to record shows. So that shut me down for a while, but thank goodness we're back at it. So thanks for your patience. For tonight's show, we're going to welcome an eyewitness named Bridget, who's going to come on and talk about the encounters that she's had around her apartment complex. She's had two encounters with what would appear to be a dog man, one definitive dog man encounter, another experience that was a Sasquatch experience, a Sasquatch encounter. So when we bring her on, she's going to basically walk us through all these experiences. But before we do that, I just want to introduce her. Bridget, thanks so much for coming on the show. Hi, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks so much for joining us. Bridget, I know it's not always easy to talk about experiences you've had with a dog man, but I really do think that you're really going to benefit from coming on and talking about these experiences. You're definitely in a much better place now than you were when we first spoke, but I do think you are going to actually grow from coming on and doing this. So I really do think this is a wise move coming on and, and sharing these experiences. Thank you. I just hope my kids aren't too much of an interruption. Oh, that's all right. Life happens. If you do the best you can, then that's always more than good enough. Well, Bridget, please tell us about yourself. Please give us a brief bio. Um, well, I'm Bridget Green. Um, I'm 37. I live in Huntington, Indiana. Um, I've been here in this apartment for about two and a half years. And um, I've got two kids, both girls. One's five, and um, she's always, always beside me. <laughs> The other one's 13, and um, we like to go outside a lot and do a lot of outdoorsy things, um, camping, hiking, um, fishing, things like that. So we're always taking, like, little nature walks and just having fun. You're just trying to enjoy your life, and it sounds <laughs> right. like you've got everything ironed out except for this dog man problem, but... It sounds like bit by bit you're working your way through it. Ever since we spoke for the first time, you've been doing something, though, that seems to be helping quite a bit to keep it at bay and, and keep it away so you can focus on living your life and not having to deal with it. What have you been doing that's been seemingly helping? Um, well, I've been taking my phone out every time I take my dog to go use the bathroom. Um, I always have it up with the camera on, and uh, that seems to be helping a lot. Why are you doing that? Where'd you get the idea to do that? <laughs> Definitely from you. <laughs> um, huh. But they, yeah, um, you were right. They definitely do not want to be caught on camera. So that is my best defense. No, they don't. No, they don't. If you're having a problem with these guys, as Bridget knows now, yeah, if they know that you're trying your best to snap a picture of them, then... In almost any case, they're going to make themselves scarce. That's the last thing they want to have happen. So if you have a dog man problem, please remember that. Bridget, what frightens you most about dog men? Um, oh, my gosh. He was just terrifying. Um, just the fact that he was so huge and fast. Um, so very fast. Like, I wasn't able to get very far because I kept tripping on myself. But, um. Yeah, just super, super fast. <laughs> yeah, that's how it normally goes. I hear some music in the background. Can you have them turn that down for me? $10. Yes, I'm so sorry. Oh, that's all right. No problem. Things like that happen. You had your dogman encounters about a year ago. Before that night, though, what were your views on the existence of cryptids? Um, I didn't really... I've never ran into one. I didn't believe them. Um, kind of like aliens. You don't really believe it until you see it. Now you know. There's no way to deny their existence. That's that's right. I I even my kids, you know, they're they're like, Mom, don't talk about that. <laughs> but I want people to be aware around us because we have a, a big apartment complex here. Um, and a lot of kids, and I just don't want them to be out walking in the woods and um, just this happening to them. Oh, of course. 
No, it's good that you're concerned about that. Just shows your good character. In addition to having the dogman encounters you're going to tell us about tonight, you've also had a Sasquatch encounter too. In yes. fact, that Sasquatch just might have been responsible for keeping that dogman away. We don't know that for sure, but I believe as that the listeners heart. here, they're going to understand why there's a strong possibility that is the case. I'm sorry to interrupt you there. <laughs> no. Does this all mean that you don't have any fear of that Sasquatch? I, I really don't. Um, I don't know why, but um, I just I feel it's more of a protector, I guess, in some ways, because um, it, it never... I expected it to come at me, <laughs> of course, and all it wanted to do is be seen. Um, so I just feel that it, it was very comforting to know that he was actually out there when all of this went down. Yeah, if he is serving as a protector, that's a pretty good ally to have on your side, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> definitely. So, I can understand you feeling that way. Your encounter happened behind your apartment complex. How far is your complex from the closest woods? Big enough to have deer in it, though. Uh, well, we have deer right out back my window. Um, we see them. We're on the second floor. So, um, you know, we have like right outside my window, we have a playground. Um, and then right past that is um, a bunch of cattails. And it's, you know, just some water land area um and then all the way around us and a huge um circle pretty much is all forest all woods wow yeah perfect habitat for dog men if you have so many deer around that they come right up to the building that says everything right there they're just yes. <laughs> the places eat up with them yeah sounds like it at least Due to how much your encounters have traumatized you, Bridget, have you ever thought about moving? Yes, yes, I have. Um, I've even taken my phone and um, put it out my back window, just snapping pictures, trying to catch it. Um, I was carrying my knife, um, my <laughs> switchblade with me every time I would take my dog out. Um, just it, it was very terrifying. Oh, I'm sure it was. Yeah, understandably so. You said that your unit's on the second floor. How much comfort does that bring you, the fact that you're not living on ground level? A lot, actually. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very comforting. <laughs> oh, it does. Well, that's good. Any edge you can get, we'll take. Right, that's right. So, yeah, that's a good thing. All right, Bridget, please tell us about your encounters now. Give us every last detail that comes to mind. Okay. Um, well, the first one, I, I didn't really get to see the animal. It was only the eyes. Um, I was taking my dog out, and um, I looked over, and in the cattails, um, there were two two trees that were pretty close together, um, but they it was like winter, so they didn't have any leaves on them or anything. Um, and th I measured him. <laughs> one was eight foot tall. The other one was 10 foot tall at the time. And um, I was at the pole here, just letting her out. And all of a sudden she stares over um, and her hair stands up on her back and she started to growl, but then she kind of tucked her head under. And so I, it made me look, of course, and I'm looking and I see these huge, huge yellowish piercing well, the eyes, um, and I'm thinking, okay, what else could this be? Is it a reflection of something? Is, you know, is somebody out there um, walking around? Um, what is that? Because they were just so huge. Um, so I just stared. I stared and for the longest time. And then I took my flashlight and I shined up at the eyes. And they turned like a, a greenish color, um, like light reflecting off of them. And um, then a couple. Hey, not to interrupt you there, Bridget, but sure. I hear that background noise again. Melissa, can you turn it down, please? Turn it down. All the way down. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, that's all right. Thank you. Um, so, okay. Where was I? Um, oh, okay. So a few moments go by and I, you know how, like, when you turn your head away, um, 
you know, it, it's like it did that. It's like it heard a noise or something and it turned away from me and then it turned back and it did that twice. And then that's when I realized that they were eyes staring at me. Um, so, of course, I just <laughs> ran back in the house. Um, but that was that was all the, the first encounter was. All right, please tell us about your other two. Okay. Um, the second encounter was I was taking my daughter um, to this park over at a church that's not far from us. Um, it's walking distance. Um, we live right beside Walmart. And then on the other side of that is the the big land that all, the church owns. And they have all this forest that they own. So, um they have most of it cleared out all the way up into the, the tree line. Um, it's probably a good a football field and a half away um, from where we were. So it was clear sight all the way to the tree line. Um, and <clears throat> I was sitting on the back up on the stairs, at the top of the stairs, and she was playing um, with the steering wheel on the, the top of it, acting like it was um, Noah's Ark. <laughs> and um, she was talking to me, but I was sitting there on my phone, and I was sending a text message, and because she was talking to me, that's what made me look up, and when I looked up, I seen a massive, massive creature, um, hair, fur all over it, um, but it was like a brownish, but it, the sun was hitting it, so it put off like this beautiful red tint, um, so I don't want to say it had red hair, but it's mainly brown, but the sun made it look kind of reddish. Um, and it was huge. It's so huge. And the strides that it took, you know, from tree to tree, it, they're probably a 10 foot away from each other. And that's just all that I got to see of this creature, um, Bigfoot. <laughs> and um, I was, it took me by surprise. It stunned me. Um, took me a second to realize what I just seen. And I told my daughter, I was like, oh, my God, we, we've got to go. I just seen a bear. It's the best way I could put it into my head. Um, and, of course, she didn't really want to go. And she thought I was joking. I said, baby, no. And I'm I'm in tears. Like, I, I, I just couldn't put it into words. I still, I still am having trouble putting that into words um, because it, it just, you know, like it was wanting me to see it for some reason it just ran from tree to tree so I walked over the next day um I walked over to where I seen it and um there was uh corn cobs that had been eaten um that were just laying there so I don't know if it was a place that it came back to or if this could have been left from other animals um but I did did see that um and that, that was pretty much the second encounter, but it was the most magnificent thing that I'd ever seen. And and when I actually, we didn't leave the park. Um, the more and more I thought about it, it didn't attack us. It, it had all the, you know, it, it could have easily have come and got us, but it didn't. It just wanted to be seen. Um, so I wasn't, I didn't feel threatened. Um, it was more like this, this beautiful thing, let me see it. It was more of a, a happy kind of occasion, even though it was scary. Um, but then, then the third one, um, this one scared me so bad <laughs> that I actually, um, I, I beat myself a little bit because I was terrified. I fell three times trying to get away from this thing. Um, I was, my daughter thought that her cat had gotten outside and uh, Macy was pregnant at that time, getting ready to have her kittens. So we were freaking out, running all over the house. We couldn't find her. So I said, okay, I'll go outside. I'll look for her outside. So first thing I did, you know, is go down the tree line um, to the park. That's the only place she could have went that, you know, that didn't have a lot of heavy traffic because if you go to the right, um, that's Walmart area and parking lot over there. So I knew she wouldn't have gone that way. So I'm walking down the back through the fence and um, probably about 
30 feet away, there's an open, the fence stops. And that's where the cattails and the woods start. So, but there's an opening, you know, that you can walk through right there. So um, my dog's with me and she, as soon as we go around the corner from the fence, she goes off to my right and to go pee really fast. And I'm, I'm sitting there watching her. And then I hear a thump, thump. And it, that's what made me look up. Um, and across this field, there is a, a light um, that stands there. And the light is probably a good eight, nine foot tall. And um, it was, this creature wasn't standing directly under the light. It was over about four or five feet from the light. Oh, boy. And so I could see it very clearly. Um, but when I seen it, it was on all fours. So I thought this thing is um, like a, a a white dog or something because the skin was so, the light was hitting it and it was just, it made it look white, you know. Um, but so I, I thought, oh my gosh, this dog is going to attack my dog, <laughs> you know, because my dog's big, but, um, you know, I, I don't want to lose her. <laughs> And um, so I got my deepest, scariest voice, and I'm trying to scare it off because I don't know why I thought it, that would work, but but I did, and I just, you know, go. <laughs> and of course, that didn't work at all. It only made it mad. So it raised. Well, it, Maggie started to go at it when I screamed at it, and then I seen it raise up. And when its hands went up, it was as tall as the light post. Um. And then it came down and smacked the ground again. It was that thump, thump that we heard. And I yelled, Maggie, no. And she listened to me. And she turned around and I said, go, go home. And she ran all the way back home. And I'm, I'm trying to get behind her and I'm running as fast as I can. I get just around the fence into the playground area. And that wet mulch, I slipped and I fell. And it was like one of those stupid movies, you know, where they just keep falling. That was me. I just could not, every time I got to my feet, I would fall again. It's like I was tripping over myself, trying to get away from this thing. And um, I was terrified. I was like, okay, you know, and at least it's not going to get my dog. It's going to get me. So um, I thought that was it. But the third time I fell, I, I, I heard it hit the fence. So something went boom. And I was like, okay, I'm dead. Just, I'm gone. <laughs> and um, I just kept looking for a couple of seconds waiting for this thing to come around the fence line and it didn't um so i i got back to my feet and my dog's coming back towards me at this time and i got to my feet and we start running and um and we get all the way back to the apartment and i come in the door and i just couldn't breathe like i i collapsed on the floor and my kids are looking at me like what's what's wrong with you and i just i couldn't breathe i couldn't catch my breath for the longest time and um so I grab my phone and I come to the back, my bedroom window where I can see out into the, the, um, the wetland in the forest area. And, um, I just start taking pictures. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to catch this thing on camera because I want people to believe me because I even called the police station, the non-emergency number. And I told them that I was attacked by something. I don't know if it was a dog i don't know if it was what kind of animal it was but it was huge and it it attacked me um and they pretty much told me that that's something that animal control would have to deal with so that made me feel like you know thanks <laughs> thanks oh, a lot <laughs> but um yeah from then on out until i talked to you i was i was completely terrified i won't let my i wouldn't let my kids go walking in the woods i wouldn't you know, let them go 10 feet from me outside. Like I carried a knife, um, a six inch knife. Um, and it's just very, it was a very hard thing to wrap my mind around. And with my kids not seeing it as well, they, they didn't really, they knew I seen something, but when I said dog man and Bigfoot, they, they just, it's something they have to see for themselves to believe. But I, I can promise you with all my heart it is 100 percent true um i will put that on my grave i will put that on anything that i know what i've seen and there is no doubting that these creatures are real oh they're definitely out there that they are 
being a single mother is difficult enough. Of course, I've never been one. I'm a, a guy, but being a single mother is difficult enough, not to mention and having a situation like you're in where you have to raise the kids and you have to take care of Maggie and, oh, there's a dog man outside. So I just, I really feel for you. I really do. It's just, it can't be easy at all. Thank you. Uh, sometimes it's hard, but um, I just, I, I don't know. I just, I have to give my kids the best life that I can and kind of take the worry from them so they don't have to worry and they could just be kids. Well, that's just a testament of the great mother you are. It's not easy. Here you are just trying to hold it together yourself. When we spoke for the first time, you're in a bad way, and understandably oh, yeah. so. I think every second of that conversation, you must have had visions of that stupid dog man doing its display where it slammed its fists into the ground and started charging you. But yeah, you sound, you definitely sound better now. Thank goodness for that. <laughs> Thank you. I I wouldn't have been better without you um, because if I had no idea, um, there was just going over and over in my mind. Why, why didn't this creature attack me? It had every chance. I mean, it was right on me. Why? What was the boom? Like, was that Bigfoot protecting me? Because I know that I've seen him twice out there or her. So I know that it comes here a lot. Um, I, I don't know why, maybe just because of the deer, her heavy hair, but, um, you know, just the fact that it sat there and stared at me for the longest time, you know, maybe it's curious about us, um, but I definitely feel like it protected me from that creature. Yeah, you just might have. I sure hope that is the case because that would be a very good ally to have on your side. And yeah, <laughs> you can definitely use any help you're going to get from right. any source. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. That's right. Bridget, does your unit open to an inside hallway or to an outside hallway? Um, it you it it has a big archway and then you walk into an inside, but it doesn't go all the way through. So like there's four apartments right here on our unit, on our side. Oh, I see. That makes sense then. Have you been tempted to warn or try to warn other tenants about what you saw out there that day, or have you just kept it to yourself? Um, mainly, I kept it to myself. Um, now, I do have a um, my best friend, Maria, that she used to live over here. She moved last year, um, but she actually watches your show, um, and she is the one that um, told me to call you. She's the only one that I, I knew that would believe me. And full heartedly, she she had my back through the whole process, and um, she was telling me that I needed to contact you um, immediately and and just talk to you and <laughs> be able to put my mind at ease, pretty much. Well, I'm so glad she told you about me. Did you say her name is Marie or Maria? Maria. Maria. Well, yeah. Maria, thanks so much for letting Bridget know about me. Yes. I'm glad you did. Like I said, how often do you think about that dog man being out there, Bridget? Is that something where every night when you lay in bed, it's almost constantly on your mind? It's the first thing you think about when you wake up. It's the last thing you think about before you close your eyes and go to sleep. How often do dog man related things occupy your thoughts? A lot, <laughs> a lot. Um, it's not necessarily for me, but I fear for my kids. Um, because they, you know, like I said, they like to go just walking out in the woods and and um, just you know looking at nature and exploring. And um, I, I, I'm scared. I'm scared to death. <laughs> Yeah, I can I've understand that. <laughs> I can understand that. But please don't lose sight of the fact that, like you've already said, if it wanted to get you, it definitely had full access to you, but it never did. Because it did what is a typical MO for these guys. It frightened you to within an inch of your life. And then once it could see that that had happened, well, it got what it wanted. So it was happy. 
So yeah, it'd be one thing if he was trying to just slaughter you at any opportunity, but that's clearly not the case. Think about all the times you let Maggie out when you didn't even know this guy was out there. Not that it really matters. Even if you did know it was out there, then it could still get you if it wanted to, but all these times you've let Maggie out and you still have yet to have a single hair in your head harmed. So please yeah. don't lose sight of that fact. That's Try right. Not I just, them going into its territory, that, that frightens me a little bit more. <laughs> oh, sure. And I'm never going to say, I've said this countless times before, I'm never going to say that dogmen are ever safe to be around. I mean, it's not a, a golden doodle or anything like that that we're talking <laughs> about here after all. I mean, I'm never going to say these guys are safe to be around. So I can understand why you'd have these concerns about the safety of your kids. But yeah, seeing these guys accurately is one thing, i.e. realizing that this one outside has had plenty of opportunities to get at you. But seeing them in ways that have nothing to do with reality because of how big they are, how frightening they are to look at, that's totally different. And doing that is not going to help you at all. What's going to help you is just focusing on what's real what what we know from what they've demonstrated with their own actions just because this one didn't actually try to cross the line and actually quote unquote get you literally get you that doesn't mean that another one a county over might not do that but with what you're dealing with the dogman you're dealing with like i said has demonstrated several times that it has full access to you basically but it is yet to harm you how effective that sasquatch has been at actually stifling any attempts it's made at trying to harm you i don't know there's no way to know that but i'm sure the sasquatch can't be there all the time but you still have yet to be harmed so that says a lot about that dog man's intentions i really don't think that it has any intentions on harming you any more than than the dogmen that have interacted with the thousands upon thousands of eyewitnesses I've spoken with had any intentions on harming them. So like I said, please keep that in mind. Right. I'm sorry. I'm shaking so bad. <laughs> it still makes me shake. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. What really gets me though, Bridget, is it's almost like you're apologizing for peeing your pants when that dogman slammed its fists into the ground and came after you. Yeah, don't feel bad about that at all. I mean, I've peed my pants without having a dog man come after me. I've actually peed my pants sometimes just sitting there watching TV. Anyway, what a guy does in his pants is nobody's business. But, his own. but anyway, don't feel bad about that. I mean, think about how many people would have done worse than that if they saw that big guy coming after them. Oh, my so, gosh. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I, my whole life flashed before my eyes. Like, I'm thinking, this is the last time I'm going to see my kids. They're not going to know what happened to me. They just know that I went out looking for my daughter's cat that they found in the house in my bedroom. And she'd already had her kittens. So there's that. <laughs> yeah. But, <laughs> oh, I'm sure you had a thousand thoughts going through your mind all at once. Oh, so. yeah. I, I still do. I still do. That's natural. That's totally natural. Well, I've got a question for you. The first one is from Truth Quest. And they want to know, Bridget, do you feel like moving now? Um, I would love to move, but I'm on Section 8, so it makes it really hard for me because um, we don't really have an income besides Social Security. Um, but, yes, I've definitely um, talked to the office about trying to move um, because of things that I, I didn't tell them what I saw, but um, I just told them that there were things that I couldn't explain that I seen um, that made me feel threatened and scared. Well, that right there should be more than good enough reason for them to say yes. So, <laughs> well, they did. They did say they would let me out of the lease, um, but finding a new place and all of that, you know, that takes time, and I have to get it signed off by Section Eight. So it's a long process. Um, but yes, we are definitely looking into moving. Well, I hope you can sooner rather than later. I mean, dealing with what you're dealing with. Yeah, it's obviously not going to be a good idea to just let the kids roam around outside, especially into the woods or anything like that. And not just talking about dogmen. I mean, who knows what else could be out there or human predators or whatever. That's but. right. 
I can understand why you'd be concerned. Well, I've got another one for you from Jack Spring. And Jack wants to know, has Bridget had nightmares about this thing afterwards or felt as if it was still around? Absolutely. I know it's still around because um, every time I let my dog out, well, it's not every time, but, um, you know, 70% of the time, I'd say um, she still will not take her eyes off of um, that area, the wooded area of what the cattails are. Um, she's always watching her back. She'll look at me and then look back um, just to make sure I'm watching, too, <laughs> um, so she can hurry up and pee and come. She runs straight back in the house. Um, but I guess the nightmares that I've had, um, they're just, <laughs> they're really more of my kids than me. Um, like the one that I had of my daughter, um, and her boyfriend, they were walking into the woods and, um, there was up in a tree. It was, it was the, the big white creature. Um, and he jumped down on him and that's when I woke up. Um, screaming I was like Cammy you know and, and she come running she's like what mom what what I was like oh I'm sorry baby it's just a dream I guess thank god yeah thank goodness is right I agree I've got another question for you from Murtaza Arif and Murtaza wants to know do you live on ancient land which may have influenced the dog man to appear I actually believe that we do because um, there are things that happen in the apartment um, that make me believe that me and Maria have talked about that several times. Um, I um, Things like move around, pictures go flying off the walls. Um, my daughter's balloons um, that I bought her, the helium ones, still follow me around the house and stop when I stop. Um, it's just a lot of weird things. I've got a lot of... Um, put a video sur surveillance camera up in my room. Um, do you see it up there? <laughs> I do. Um, so I've got a lot of recordings of things that um, happen while we're sleeping that I believe it tends to, to wake us up a lot. So yes, I do believe that um, this was some kind of um, burial grounds. Well, you do have a lot of strange things happening there. <laughs> Absolutely. I'd say so. I've got another one for you from Stephen Weishaupt. And Stephen's question is, has she had any mind speak from the Bigfoot or Dog Man? Repeat that question for me. Sorry, Sissy, no. Sure. Stephen wants to know, has she had any mind speak from the Bigfoot or Dog Man? Um, my, mind speak? What? Sorry. That's right. Yeah, the mind speak is what you told me about the Bigfoot doing when it was basically communicating with you telepathically almost in your head? Oh, I've never actually, I've never thought that, that never even really crossed my mind. Um, you know, the words that you the heard? The calming, the way that I felt so calm I, in that situation, yeah. Yeah. Um, that is very, actually, that is very possible. And it, it makes me think a lot more into it now um because it just there was such a calming influence that came over me that was just like hey i'm here i'm not trying to hurt you um so actually that is very wonderful thank you for asking that question that is a good question it's a pretty common phenomenon when people have encounters with dogmen or sasquatch happens more than what most people would believe well most people don't believe in their existence <laughs> anyway. So <laughs> I Not guess that's, they see them. <laughs> that's right. Then all bets are off. I've got another question for you from Truth Quest, and they want to know, Bridget, do you think you'll react the same way if it confronted you again? Um I I, de I definitely know that I would not yell at it or try to provoke it in any way. Um, the way I did last time, um, I would probably just treat it as like more of a bear and back away slowly um and not running <laughs> um but I, I i really don't know i say that but i don't know and unless i'm put there that i would actually be able to to um keep myself calm enough to do that <laughs> Oh, sure. You know what they say? Everyone's got a plan until they get hit. And you're right. You never would know how you're going to respond, how you're going to react. And unless that situation was put in your face again, which I hope it never does happen. Right. But, 
or my um, kids. <laughs> or your kids. That's right. And that, uh oh, I hear Maggie firing up about somebody or something. Uh, that's my daughter's boyfriend's dog. <laughs> it's the first oh. time they brought him over. <laughs> Oh, I Maggie, see. Maggie's beside me on the floor here. Yeah, I was thinking that didn't sound big enough to be Maggie, so I wasn't really sure what to think. <laughs> yes, Maggie is a Belgian Malinois, so she's pretty huge. A Maligator. Um, a Belgian Malinois. Oh, sure, but a nickname for those guys is Maligators. Oh, I did not know that. That is very neat. <laughs> yeah, it sure is. Blood Viper's question is kind of related to what we we're just talking about. He wants to know, has your experience or have your experiences changed how you watch over your children? Definitely. Um, yeah, I don't let them go in the woods anymore by themselves. Um, I know that they were out walking today um, just around the apartment complex, but they, they had their phones out in their hands and the their um video or you know camera app pulled up already um that was uh, that was mandatory before they were allowed to even leave the house <laughs> good idea yeah, you can't be too careful especially these days with human predators and sickos out there so that's always a good idea not just with dogmen around and it looks right. like Battlestar Terra 3 wow. has a general question regarding dogmen and her question is, why are cemeteries so significant? It's funny you ask that question, Tira, because in a lot of encounters, eyewitnesses have reported seeing these guys around old ancient Native American burial grounds. It's a very common occurrence. It's funny because years ago, I had this lady write me a nasty message, and she told me in the message that she had sworn off ever listening to dogman encounters again because she was sick and tired of, of people talking about Native American cemeteries being attached to dogmen. Why did I ask this particular guest if there are any Native American burial grounds around? I guess she must not have realized that dogman encounters are so common around Native American burial grounds. So, yeah, that's why, to answer your question, Tira, that's why people ask, they commonly ask about the presence of these burial grounds around where encounters happen. Looks like the next question for you, Bridget, is from William Smith. And William wants to know if you can describe it in more detail. Um, describe which one in more detail. The dog man. Okay. Um, well, what I could see was that it had a pretty, um, a big chest, but it was pretty thin underneath, um, like um, a Dalmatian's um, build. Um, it was it was white, pure white. Um, I don't know if it had fur on it or not. I don't know. Um, I just know that the light that was reflecting off of this animal made it look pure white. Um, and then when it stood up, um, the, it, it definitely had more paws. <laughs> they were paws and they went straight up um, over its head. And then they he brought it down and just bow, bow. Um, I'm so sorry. My, my daughter is. Oh, no, she's fine. Just make sure she understands since she interrupted you. Unfortunately, there's a $20 fine for that. I do accept <laughs> cash check and charge, though. So if she can break her piggy bank, she could pay me that way. That's right. I'm Wait, just kidding. Minute, please. Let me get done with this. Okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, come on. Cheer up now. <laughs> Yeah, there's a comment that TruthQuest posted. He said, I don't think I would allow children back into the woods. And you've already addressed that. I mean, you're taking precautions. So, you don't yes, um, I, Unfortunately, my uh, daughter is 13, my oldest. Um, my youngest doesn't go. Uh, but my oldest is 13 and her boyfriend is 14. Um, and, you know, it wouldn't matter if I told them they couldn't. They're they're going to do what they want at that age, especially, you know, when I don't really know where they're walking. Um, so I just rather them be prepared and um, just just hear me gripe about it and them not encounter what I encountered instead of walking up on it unexpectedly and having to deal with what I, I'm dealing with. Having to deal with you, unfortunately, have been made to deal with. 
Yeah, that is really unfortunate. Looks like I have another question for you from Truth Quest. They want to know in this one, where do you want to move? Um, well, the only place really that um, wouldn't be in this area that I, I don't think Dogman would go to um, is back to Fort Wayne, um, where we lived before. Um, I hate the hustle and bustle of the city. That's why we moved here. But I don't know what's more dangerous. Um, anymore, um, whether it be the people over there or the the creatures that are out here in our woods. Yeah, I can understand your sentiments on that. I'm not a big fan of the city either. I'd rather live out. So I get it. I've got one for you from Mercia Miranda. And her question is, do you think it was the same one in all three encounters? Or do you think there are many? Um, well, I, I do believe that the Bigfoot was the same um, at both sightings. And the dog man, it was the very first time that I had actually um, encountered him um, or that I, that I know of that he was around. I see. This next question from Truth Quest is kind of related to what you just said. You addressed this in the, the last comment. They want to know, Bridget, where would you feel safe to move to? Hawaii? <laughs> huh. um, actually, you know, now that I know that they truly exist and that they're out there, I don't think that really any place is going to be safe. Um, you just need to um, know what they're capable of, what know what they're going to do um, as far as their nature, as you have explained to me, Victor, um, and just know more about the creatures. Um and don't let them frighten you. Don't let them just surprise you. Just know that they're there and you can run into them pretty much anywhere you go. I mean, they're there. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, it's good you realize that. Is that Mike Long Island Bigfoot in the live chat? Hey, Mike, how you doing, buddy? <laughs> yeah, he's out there. I've got another question for you from Zareth the Alchemist. And their question is, did you ever sage and pray over your place? Yes. Um, my neighbor downstairs actually gave me some sage. And, and I'm planning on doing it again when it gets a little warmer and I can open up all the windows and doors. Um, I've had a priest come in twice. Um, and they've prayed in all the rooms. Um, and they've given me pamphlets of prayers that I can um, pray to help. Um, I do feel that the worst presence um, that was here, I feel like he has gone. Um, but there are several more here. Um, and I do have an app on my phone, um, the ghost the ghost box, the box. And um, every once in a while, I will turn that on just to listen. Um, and one time, it was only a couple weeks ago, um, I heard come over my phone on that, that app. It said, She's listening. Oh. And then that, I was creeped out by that. So I was like, you know, I'm sorry. I don't mean any harm. I just, <clears throat> I'm just curious. Um, I wanted to know who's, who's here, who's, who's around my kids. Um, and that was, that was all I, I said. Okay, bye. <laughs> and I turned it off. Wow. Hearing something like that, this, something like that just might make me pee pee my pants. <laughs> You never well, it doesn't take that much, but anyway, it might. You never know. <laughs> and then it looks like Stephen Weishop is going to comment. He's comment commenting on your answer for his question earlier. He's saying, "Yes, that's mind speak." Thank you for answering that, Bridget. And then the next question is from Elaine Isabel, and Elaine wants to know: Was it the same dog men in all three encounters? Which You've already answered that. Right. And then the next question would be from D Truth. I guess it's for me. That question is, Vic, what percent of time that an eyewitness saw a dog man that the dog man saw them as well? Well, in almost every instance, when an eyewitness is reported seeing a dog man, the dog man's either looking right at them or it's pretty clearly aware of their presence. But these guys, if you're in the same area with them, in almost every instance, I've got no doubts that they know that you're there before you do. So that shouldn't be a surprise. 
The next one is from Murtaza Arif, and he wants to know, did you ask your neighbors if they also had similar experiences in their home? Yes, I've talked to a few of my neighbors around here, and they um, they they don't really, most of them don't believe in spirits, um, but they said that there's been some things that happening, um, and so they actually came to me because, you know, word got around that, um, I set up cameras and things like that. And I've got some crazy pictures. Um, just insane that stuff that will blow your minds. Um, uh, that's a hundred percent real that came from my camera that I've downloaded to my phone. So, um, yeah, I've definitely, definitely had some discussions with neighbors that are dealing with the same things. Yeah. I can only imagine the things that you have on camera around there. Poor thing. You shouldn't have to deal with that. That's horrible. It really is. The next question is from Blood Viper, and their question is, did you believe in cryptids before you had your encounter? No, absolutely not. Yeah, there's no cause to. I'm sure it wasn't in your face or anything like that. It wasn't a part of your regular life, so... I'm sure it was the last okay. thought that would ever cross your mind. Yes, it de definitely. I mean, like I said, I thought it was some kind of dog or something over there that had, I don't know, just beautiful white fur <clears throat> until it stood up. And then that's when I realized that this was something I'd never seen before. Yeah, like I've said many times, it's all fun and games until the dog man stands up, <laughs> unfortunately. If you've had a dogman encounter and would like to speak with me about it, whether in private or on the show, please go to dogmanencounters.com and submit a report. If you do that, then I'd be more than happy to schedule a consultation with you. Of course, there's never any pressure to do a show. If you want to just get help from me to deal and come to terms with your encounter, then that's not a problem whatsoever. So please remember that if you've had a Sasquatch sighting, would like to be a guest on either of my two Bigfoot shows, please go to my Bigfoot sighting.com and let me know. All right, moving forward. The next question is from D truth and they want to know were the rear legs straight or a canine like, um, well, it, it was facing me straight on. So I, I was so far away that I really couldn't see the legs um, that I was more into how tall this thing was. So I was looking up. <laughs> so I'm sorry. I can't really answer that question. Well, that's understandable. You had so much going through your mind. It was a situation where you're doing good to know your own name. So you can't be <laughs> faulted for taking in every detail. This question <laughs> coming up here is kind of related to another detail that I doubt that you can answer, but. I'm going to throw it out there for you anyway. The question is from Cody Lucario. And their question, Cody's question is, were you able to get a good look at the dog man's eyes? Can you describe them? Um, no, I'm so sorry. Um, that's, it, I think it was just too far away um, that I didn't really, like I, I didn't even know the creature was there until I heard the thump thump and that's what made me look up um, and see him. It was, he was on my side of the road cause there's a road there that's not very um, traveled. Um, but right behind that road is the woods. And it was the last thing I expected to see. Oh, I'm sure it was. Now this next question is a take it or leave it. Just like all these questions are. There's no pressure to answer this if you don't want to, for obvious reasons. But the question is, if you elect to answer it, it's from D Truth, and he wants to know: Does she own a firearm? If not, is she considering one? Again, there's no pressure to answer that if you don't want to. I am licensed to carry, um, but I haven't had a gun for a couple of years. Um, I was in a, an abusive relationship, and that was the, kind of like the last thing I wanted in the home around him. Um, but firearms, I feel, um, just get people in more trouble, really, than, than their work. Like, I feel like if I were to, to point the gun at that creature, it probably would have gotten mad and attacked me even more. <laughs> so it might have actually got to me, you know. I, I definitely don't want to threaten anything. 
Firearms are a false sense of security around dogmen and Sasquatch in a lot of cases. People talk about, well, I'm going to carry a 10 millimeter out there with me to protect myself, or maybe a long gun. I'm going to take a 4570 out there with me or a 12 gauge. Well, what good is that gun going to do you if it decides to come up behind you and snatch your head off? Hey. Or because it sees you carrying that gun it ramps up aggression that wouldn't have been there in the first place. I mean, yeah, you can have formidable firepower with you, but if you can't bring it to bear, but don't lose sight of the fact that these guys are so much more capable than they ever get credit for being, especially in the woods, they can sneak up on you at any time. And that's going to negate any advantage that you think that your gun's going to give you. That's why I tell you that, and I've said, countless times that guns in the woods are a false sense of security sometimes they do cause problems to happen that wouldn't have happened if you didn't have that gun so just something to think about That's right and that was a really good question from d truth about whether you own a firearm or not and <laughs> you've considered getting one if you didn't that's a very good question but for obvious reasons you being a single mother i wasn't sure if you wanted to answer that or not that's why i qualified that before i i asked you the question I now the next oh i'm sorry I, i'm sorry i was just gonna say i am more of a country girl i've grown up around guns and knives my whole life so i do carry a pocket knife all the time no matter what no i understand i understand i've got another question for you from random sasquatch with wi-fi and they're actually a guest on the show a while back. Their question is, did you ever get that feeling of doom that many people talk about? Um, the feeling where your whole life flashes across your eyes and you just, you know, that that's the last moments of your life. I think they're asking about an ominous feeling before you even saw the dog. Yet. A lot of eyewitnesses report this feeling of doom, this ominous feeling come on them, come upon them before they even see a dog man for the first time um well actually i was calling out um for macy the cat that we were we were looking for and um you know just watching my dog because she wasn't on a leash or anything so um i wasn't really paying any attention to anything else um i didn't notice that he was even over there until i heard the thump thump like his hands pounding on the ground. And I didn't even know what that was until he did it in front of me. Thank goodness you did find Macy safe and sound. Yes. <laughs> Thank goodness for that. I've got another question for you from Blood Viper. Blood Viper wants to know, did you get any smells from the dog man in any of your encounters? You know, I was, um, I did not. Um, and I asked Maria about that because she had told me that they they do have a really um bad odor like a wet dog smell or something um but maybe it, i i don't know if it was just because it was so far away or maybe the wind was blowing a different direction um maybe that's why i was able to come up on him without you know i think he probably wouldn't have been as close as he was if he knew that i was you know there because i had just walked around the fence um and I wasn't far from that fence. I think that I surprised him as much as he surprised me. You might have surprised him, but I doubt it. I bet good money that he knew that you were there before you came around the fence. He didn't show his hand that he knew that maybe. But like I said, I'd be surprised if he didn't know that already. It looks like D Truth is another good question for you. He wants to know: Does she wear a crucifix? And if so, does she think it has or may protect her? I wear a cross. Um, my daughter wears a crucifix around her neck, and um, I don't believe that really the material items are what is going to save us and protect us. Um, I do believe in God, and. Um, I think he's the only one that has kept us safe um, living here in this home. Um, I talk to him every day and I just ask him to send his angels to watch over us and he gets us through another night. God bless you. I like the sound of that. I've got another question for you from Elaine Isabel. And Elaine wants to know, how big were the claws and did you see the canine teeth? 
um no it like i said it was just so far away um all i i just thought it was a, a white dog um and then you know of course when it stood up i was just kind of sizing it up with the pole um with the the light pole um and it then i looked at maggie because my dog was already going at this creature and um so i didn't look at it for very long at all because i knew that it was something i didn't want to mess with i didn't want my dog killed so i mean i immediately focused on her and called her off and told her to run home um and then i, I booked it so i didn't really get the best look i was only for a couple of seconds um but it was enough to terrify me for for life <laughs> Well, I'm sure it did terrify you. When Maggie did take off and head for home, was she looking over her shoulder, looking back at you to check on your welfare, or was she making a, a full-out sprint for the front door? At first, she made a V-line for it, um, but when I fell, she looked back, and um, the second time I fell, she come back to me, and um, you know, I screamed, <clears throat> I screamed for her to go on to the house, and she turned around and ran to the house. Good girl. She loves her mom. That's impressive. <laughs> She's a very smart dog. <laughs> yeah, Otherwise, I feel that she would have been killed because um, she would have straight at, tried to attack it. Yeah, she just might have been killed. Thank goodness that didn't happen. Amen. Yeah, definitely. It looks like Klejnot Nilu has got a question for you, and I really hope the answer to this is no, because of all the flack, all the blowback that can come with this if you do get some good pictures. But the question is, are you going to upload those photos slash videos somewhere? I've seen maybe one or two great dogman photos. Again, going to qualify that by saying, if you do have good dogman photos or video, if you post it in a public venue, that can draw a lot of attention to yourself from the government that you are not going to want. Oh, um, I have not gotten a, a picture, even though I had my phone in my hand when I seen the Bigfoot. Um, it was, it, it took me off guard so much that I got sat there for a minute trying to wrap my head around what I just seen was this, um, somebody in a costume trying to play with me, but there was no way because of how tall it was. And it was like, there's, it, it, it was running, but it was like effortlessly it was such a glide that it was almost beautiful to watch like um i didn't even think about grabbing my my phone and taking a picture but i wouldn't have even had enough time um I, and both times i was thinking more about you know the safety of my kid and getting it well the, that time getting my kid out of there and the other time getting my dog out of there <laughs> Oh, of course. Yeah, you have an experience like that. Pulling out a phone or a camera is going to be the last thought on your mind. So that's Definitely. expected. But I'm trying. I mean, I've got it. I've got it set up every time I go out. So, and I'm still taking pictures out my back window. Um, but the other ones, the videos of what's going on in the house, um, I, I'm thinking about putting them up on YouTube on a channel of some kind. Um, just to see what other people think uh, I'm seeing. <laughs> yeah, no, I understand. That's probably a good idea. The pictures in the house, I think, would draw a lot less attention than anything outside with pointed ears and shirts. Yeah, so, definitely. Good move. That is a good move. Looks like the next question would be from Cody Licario. And Cody's question is, you mentioned had a Dalmatian-like build. Can you elaborate a bit on that? Um, well, like I said, I only saw it just for a minute, but I know that I was looking at it head on and the chest was a lot when it stood up, um, its chest was big and broad and then it was skinnier down towards the bottom. And then his legs were, you know, they weren't really skinny, skinny, but they weren't big either. Um, so, I mean, it was just how, how their, um, their chests are really big and round and then they get really skinny. I don't know if you can picture what I'm trying to say. No, I think that makes sense. It's a good way to describe it. This is more of a comment than a question. It's from Truth Quest, and the comment is perhaps carry some bear spray. I can understand that recommendation, but I'm not going to necessarily agree with that because the last thing you want to do is is <laughs> it's a dog man and really tick it off. So 
I wouldn't recommend doing that. I wouldn't. The next question is from D Truth, and D wants to know: Does she wish this never happened, or is she glad to have such knowledge of their existence? Um, I'm actually now that I I can um, come to terms with it more. I'm glad that it happened, um, just so I know that um, you know these these sightings and um, these creatures are. Um, coming closer and closer to us um, and there's been more and more sightings and you know eventually it's just come to the point where you know they're going to be right up against us around us because they have nowhere else to go because we're taking all their land um, that I would rather know ahead of time than be be without the knowledge and um, just scared to death not knowing what to do or where to go <laughs> I feel the same way. You know what they say, forewarned is forearmed. So, I agree. Looks like I've got another one for you from Cody Lucario. And Cody's question is, please skip if this is inappropriate, but have these encounters affected your daughters? Um. Well, my oldest daughter, she just doesn't want me ever to talk about it. Um, she doesn't want people to think that I'm crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and my youngest daughter, um, it terrifies her. She will not go to the playground without me. She stays right beside me at all times. Like even in here, she's right beside me. <laughs> um, so she just, it, it has affected them. Um, but my oldest daughter is so bullheaded that I just, I don't know. I'm going to protect her the best I can. And hope that it doesn't happen and she doesn't have to see one of these firsthand. Well, on one hand, I'm not happy about your daughter being terrified. But on the other hand, it is useful if it keeps her safe. If it keeps her from doing something foolish like heading into the woods alone for more reason than one. But, yeah, like I said, I don't want you, I don't want your daughters to be terrified or anything like that. So, yeah, kind of yeah, her a, fear comes from me. Um, you know, she sees that I'm terrified, so she's she's taking on my fear. That's understandable. I've got another one for you from Blood Viper, and Blood Viper wants to know: Did your family and friends, if you told slash talk to them, believe you, or were you ridiculed by them? Um. Well, fortunately, um, I have my best friend Maria, and um, she was there for me the whole time. Like she totally believes me. Um, there's no doubt. And, um, as far as any other family, I don't really have any other families. So, um, it's just me and my girls. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Sounds like you have a good family there. So <laughs> thank you. That's a good thing. You're welcome. I've got one for you from Sherry French and Sherry yeah. wants to know, Bridget, do you have orbs in your house? Absolutely, I do. Yes, and I've got many, many, many on camera. Um, one just blows my mind because it kind of looks like a bubble and it just, it comes straight down. Um, and my dog looks at it. <laughs> and because Maggie was laying on the bed and it comes down, she looks at it. And I've just got incredible videos um, with orbs. Well, like I said, I can only imagine the videos you've got. With all that activity. So I believe it. And then it looks like I've got another one for you from Jack Spring. And Jack wants to know, did Bridget, did Bridget pray when she saw this creature? And if so, does she believe it helped protect her? Um, I think just, I didn't, I didn't have time to, to pray, but um, being a big believer in God and talking to him every day, I feel that um, his he was already protecting me. Yes, he was. I don't doubt that at all. And I've got a comment. It's not a question from Kat. She says, live, caught it. And yes, you did. <laughs> We're glad you're here. I'm going to ask one more question. I think I missed one that wasn't in all caps. Where was that? Hopefully I can find it. It makes it so hard to find them when they're not capitalized. Oh, well, I don't see it. Well, before we get out of here, do you have any closing comments you'd like to share? 
Um, I would just like to thank everyone for listening to me. Um, I am, um, <laughs> I've been really shaky, um, with the whole experience and just trying to deal with it and being able to wrap my mind around what I've actually seen. And, um, just, I want more people to, um, to know that just because you don't see it doesn't mean that it ain't there. And I can promise you that it is. It is there and it is very real. Oh, definitely. They definitely are. And like I said, you aren't comfortable with it right now, but you're definitely in a much better frame of mind than when we spoke for the first time. And as long as we're making improvements and progress, then that's definitely a good thing. Please remember, Bridget, you're never going to be alone dealing with this. If you ever need help again, if you ever think another conversation is going to benefit you, please, by all means, reach out to me, shoot me a message, let me know. And by all means, we'll definitely schedule another conversation to find out what's ailing you. You're never going to have to deal with this alone. Okay. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. You know, you're welcome. Just glad to help. I feel blessed to be in a position to be able to help. So please remember that. But having said that, thanks so much, everyone, for listening to the show, for your contributions, supporting the eyewitnesses and everything. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. I really do. But having said that, thanks again so much for listening and have a great night. <laughs>